Total Access, everybody. I'm MJ Acosta Ruiz. Mike Yam with me tonight. William McGinnis and David That's Carr right. in real life. Earth, He's Earth, back, Earth, baby. Earth. <laughs> um, what a way to end week 14. We were just talking about the craziness of last night's game. But that is now in the rear view. And week 15 has a big old gift for all of us in the form of an extra day of football, Yam. We got Saturday ball. I, I love it. Actually, a yeah. triple header right here on NFL Network. Matchups that will absolutely affect playoff positioning. Colts and Vikings at 1 Eastern time. Minnesota so to keep in mind, they clinch an NFC North with a win or a tie, Ravens and Browns. And, of course, the Dolphins and Bills wrap it up. Finn's trying to avoid a three-game losing streak, plus picking up the pieces after a rough night at SoFi Stadium. Herbert back for throw. Looking, looking, looking. Getting pressure. Go. Oh, he got it. It's Wilkins. Oh, Herbert rolls to his right. Throws to the end zone. Caught Mike Williams. Throws it downfield, and it's caught! It touched down Miami! Tyreek Hill! 60 yards! Dolphins right back in it. Yeah, 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 yeah! Takes the handoff. Herbert's got room. Rolls to his right. Takes that shot back toward Mike Williams. Other side of the field. Caught! Big Mike Williams! Just throw it to Mike! All right, well, after winning five straight games, it's now back-to-back -back losses for the Dolphins. And Tua's 35.7 completion percentage in Week 14, the worst by a Miami quarterback since 1980. MJ, they had the space heaters on the sidelines inside SoFi Stadium. If they thought that was cold, check this out. Saturday, 26 degrees with a 50% chance of snow for the game. We're from the Northeast, we know. Like, that's, okay, that's the norm. They really have the to be on? fair, I was at the game, and I wish that I had hand warmers with me that okay. day. Right. It was cold. Hand I know warm. the stadium's not cold. I know that I'm in L.A. Get off my back. <laughs> we're very warm-blooded in California Miami. California life. It is. And you said oh. we're from the Northeast. Is Miami's the... Uh, I'm just... Let's what? Stop it. Jay Semantics. <laughs> there was a gust of wind coming yeah. through at some point. Yeah, can't so confirm it was uh, brisk All right. on Sunday night. Uh, but let's dive, dive into this matchup, because it, it wasn't it wasn't cute. There's a lot of Finns fans there, and everybody felt real salty by the time we got to have uh, to have time there. But they're headed to Buffalo this week. Like you mentioned, that weather is not going to be nice, and neither is that Bills team. Can they get this together, though? Are they going to be able to make the adjustments that they need to make? We've been pleading with Mike McDaniels to see yeah, more of that run yeah. game, David. Well, I love Mike McDaniels as a coach. I've loved watching his offense kind of mature over the course of this year. I've watched every snap of the Dolphins. I love watching that offense. They do some really interesting things. They're just going to have to tweak it a little bit because the, the book's kind of out. Like, you know, obviously, talking to Willie a lot, like, people see your stuff a lot. Like, these two plays I'm going to show you are identical. Same place. So you're going to move Tyreek Hill across in motion, okay? And this is just from Sunday, right? And you try and snap it so he's got speed up the field. The corners are in good position. They've seen this route a lot. It's a vertical route off this motion, and they've made this play before. This is a good play by the corner. He gets his hand up, knocks it away, and you say, oh, they missed an opportunity there. But if you go back to week one against the Patriots, same play, right? We're going to have the motion across. Tyreek Hill's going to be on the same exact route. It actually isn't even that good because it's week one. He's not sure if he wants to run by or sit. He's kind of feeling it out as far as how the Patriots are playing it. So you can see he kind of jogs off the ball. He's not really running. Tua throws it anyway, but now Tyreek makes an extremely awesome play with one hand. So it's not like they're just going to fall off the wagon and forget how to play football. They still have the ability to make those types of plays. They just didn't make them against the Chargers. But right? they were in the one-on-one -on -one opportunities. They had all those chances to make big plays down the field. You saw one time, you know, Tua lets it go, and he kind of poses with his hand, thinks he's got a touchdown to Tyreek down the middle of the field. Tyreek doesn't even see it. Waddle, same thing on the right side. They just missed these opportunities, and the Chargers did a good job playing tight man-to-man -man coverage against them, kind of taking away those quick hitters on the inside, which Mike McDaniels is going to have to address. They're going to have to get better there, but... Man, the Buffalo's no slouch. They're going to roll up into some cold weather, and they're going to have to improve on what they didn't do out here in, in a, maybe a warm L.A. Yeah, which is kind of wild to me when warm. you think about <laughs> this team, this Buffalo team, as you made reference to. No Von Miller. Last two games, though, a combined 22 points. That's all they've given up yep. at this point. Mooch was with us the other day. He was Mike White. He was doing the impersonations and, and getting oh, hit. Man. He was pumbled out there. His right. life was miserable right. on Sunday. Is that what two is in store for? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a different environment. It's loud. It's hostile. The weather could could play a part in it. So I think you got to change the game and you got to adjust. Like you said, we want to see more running. When you go to Buffalo in the weather or the wind, snowing, whatever the case may be, you got to be able to adjust. And we know this is a quick, big play hitting type of offense, and they will make tweaks. But Buffalo, what they showed without Von Miller is they can still get pressure yeah. and get to the quarterback with four. 
And when they couldn't get there with four, sometimes they bought five. But they ran games. There it is right there. That's five guys, and they're running games up front. That means they can drop either six or seven guys back in the coverage, which you can double team certain guys. You can play high, low. You can mix in zones and man-to-man -man coverages. And they got the guys on the back end to do that as well. So I would say the game is going to change a little bit for the Dolphins because now you got to go to silent count. It's extremely loud in Buffalo. The communication changes, all those things changes. So you can't have slip-ups. You can't be behind. You can't, you, can, you can't not be on the same page with your receivers because that's going to turn into big plays. So the communication also is going to become big. Because that's a that big crowd because they're still relatively loud. a young offense. Like yes. You've right. got the play caller and the quarterback working together. Everything. They haven't really been this situation. Silent count, like hand movements, adjustments, yeah. all those things got to come at the line. Yeah. Bill's fans loud. I'm hearing M. Rob yelling. <laughs> yes. Mafia the in the background. Breaking. 100%. Oh gosh, but this offense from a Bill's perspective, I think a lot of fans say, all right, we can rely on Josh Allen. That's a good thing. But yeah. that concerns you a little bit. Well, yeah, it does concern me because he's it, it's it's one guy, right? And a lot of games and a lot of teams and a lot of great teams, like I referenced Willie again, the Patriots, right? You think about those guys. It, it was Tom Brady, but it was every other component. It's every other piece. They established the run. I remember being with the Giants and walking into the pregame meeting and Kevin Gilbride's up there and Tom Coughlin talking about, we got to establish weak side zone. That'll build the play action. That'll build a clean pocket. Then we make plays. Then Eli goes out and scores 50 points. And it's like, oh, it's just Eli. But not really. It was, it was kind of building inside out. And right now when I watch the Bills play, it's so much of 17 doing these heroic type plays. And I don't know like I don't know how much you can do of that and be consistent they, that's why I think we see them up and down I think we see them make some dynamic plays and they'll look good for two or three quarters and they'll kind of fall off and go away because I think it's too hard to sustain that type of excellence from one guy for the whole year honestly I used the term earlier I was like I think they're bored right there they've been at the top of the league for so long they played a good Jets team the other day they beat them pretty handily you know so I think that until we get to maybe maybe even the playoffs we're going to see a dialed in, really focused team because I think Josh Allen he might be tired. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a lot to put on one guy physically throughout the course of a year. And they've been bored, but they haven't gotten to the championship, which is the goal. I'm with you. And, yeah. and, and while they're building this team and put adding players and doing different things, and you mentioned Josh Allen, I will say this the Buffalo Bills are who they are. OK, that's they're not going to change their stripes right now at this point in the season. They know that he's a big play uh, type of guy. He can do it with his legs and his arm. And he's and to be honest, he wants the ball in yeah. his hands in crucial situations or in the goal line where he can run it in or those design run plays or when he needs to make a throw. And he, the majority of the time he can do that. But I think as a play caller, Ken Dorsey has to understand that sometimes that confidence turns into pressure, turns into turnovers, which we've seen like a small run of sample size. And it, it, it makes it seem like he has to do everything. At some point, even your all-stars, superstars, your best players, you got to take the pressure off yeah, and allow so all the other talented players to make those plays. You got a stable of running backs. You got great receivers on the outside. You got a tight end and you got a quarterback that can do every single thing. As you go into the playoffs, we've tried it the other way for a few years. Has not worked. I just think you need a little bit more diversity and let the running game take a little more as you get into these bad weather physical games that's gonna that can take some of the pressure off of Josh. Yeah. But I'm not taking but listen, I'm not slowing him down to a be lot. Clear. No, you, <laughs> yeah, be clear. I'm not slowing yeah. him down a lot. It's a great point about pressure though, because as you've seen, when they get into those pressure situations and he hasn't made the dynamic play, he tries to make that dynamic play. And it's like, man, I wish there was someone else who could take some pressure off of him.